Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cougar City Podcast. Today, we are here with Bob, JPY, Jen, and myself, Cougars Bay. Bolt is going to be joining us a little bit later with um, our next podcast. So today, uh, there's not really that much we're going to talk about other than what's going on with the game. Um, The state of the game, a lot of people freaked out because, well, I mean, they kind of nerf everything, but... It was a rough patch, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But it's actually not that bad, actually, you know, it's it's not that bad. JP, I mean, you're you're the DPS expert in here. Um, You want to talk to us about uh, what you've seen in the game so far so first of all i will apologize for any knee-jerk reaction i had because i was honestly legit scared going into this patch but um uh it seems like the 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 blanket nerf to like bannerman boss health the 10 percent um yeah it seemed like lazy at the time or just whatever is us trying to like fix a leaky hole in the bottom of the ship just to plug it. But um, after uh, experiencing some content so far, I would have to say that, yeah, on average at the high end on the dummy, you know, we're down 20% DPS, whatever, 15 to 20% pending on class and um, what you're doing. But I will say that simplicity in combat i think the ceiling is lower but the floor definitely what they intended is a lot higher so i think like that 10 percent nerf so if you subtract that from your 20 you still have like a 10 percent nerf overall in content but i think that's even mitigated more by um let's just people playing at a higher level in content because of long dot timers paying attention to mechanic um you know with long dots you can get more spammables in and it's pretty much the easiest thing to do as a DPS is, you know, hit your whip 15 times or whatever your spammable is. So um, I, d- I don't think it's been as impactful. And I think if, uh, you know, more people, I mean, I have noticed less people, a lot of progs, a lot of friends in progs, really hard to fill rosters right now because I think the initial re- knee-jerk reaction, as I had, um, was this is going to be terrible, but I would definitely say to anyone out there, like, give it a shot. It's definitely doable. Obviously, there's some really high-end stuff that needs to be adjusted, but I think that's more or less a healing thing if you guys, you know, and you and Jen want to talk about that as well. Like, you know, that seems to be the bigger issue to me. Not issue, but, like, where the real, like, prog is or where the real difficulty is. Not necessarily with DPS, I don't mm-hmm. believe. You know? No, the, the healing... I think they really do need to uh, give a little bit back to the healers. Yeah, revisit healing a bit. Yeah, but it's not as bad. Um, In a way, I think this is a good thing because it's giving the healers a little bit more um, of a chance to, to get in the game and say, okay, this, I know this was working last patch, but it's not working this patch. So it gives us a little bit of, um, theory crafting of what to do with certain skills and sets and such um but i think even after that um i haven't healed as much as jen this patch but even after that i think we still need to gain back a little bit more um jen you you've healed this patch more than i have yeah so yeah i'm feeling it i feel um in group content specifically in 12 man content I see health bars, you know, chunking a lot more, dipping down, not being able to heal up to full as much. Um, With the two-second timers, uh, we pretty much are a slave to, like, heal over time abilities because of the way, like, you know, you can spec into your champion points for, like, extra, you know, healing to your heal over times versus single target heals. Single target heals is bursty, absolutely, but it's not the greatest heal for group content where everybody's taking damage. We need those heal over times working. Um, it's been a challenge to, you know, look at my skill setups and like what I'm using, how long they run for, and adding things to my book can give me more heals over time, even though they're ticking slowly. And then it's just a matter of keeping a closer eye on like people's health bars to make sure that when somebody is taking more damage than the heal over time can help them with that there is still something like maybe a combat prayer to help them 
Um, I know some people have stopped using mutagen, but it is still the, the not mutagen, what is it called now? Radiating regen? Radiating regen, yeah. Yeah, I'll always call it mutagen. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of people have stopped using that, but the thing is, is like, my my champion points are all specced into heal over times to buff those. Um, so it doesn't make sense for me as a Templar to put like a breath of life. One, it might not target the person. Two, the the radiating regen will count as a heal over time, adds to the other ones, and reaches so far. So sometimes like there's group movement specific, specifically in uh, like say VDSR during the um, kite phase. We all have to run around the boss. Uh, while the um, thousand cuts is happening and people get spread out there I can't lay hots on the floor to keep people up so combat prayer and radiating regen are like the only things I can do for that um, I have recently added in a um, vigor the group vigor to my bar because that's a movement based one as long as people are around me it's got a nice big um, AOE to it that I can apply a heal over time to the whole group while moving so that's a good one to add but yeah I'm definitely feeling it I hope they revisit the the, the maybe the two second timer or maybe increase our heals some more um, I wouldn't want to run something like spell power cure right now because overhealing is is difficult yeah I mean like I said, I haven't I haven't really healed much this patch, but um, the what I have healed, it's it's rough. Um, in some of those, um, yeah, like Nvidia starts our, rough. If is rough. <laughs> yeah, and our as far as I know, like the heals abilities on my bar being like lay them on the floor. They didn't get an increase in timer. Um, they took a hit to you know how often they they heal somebody, and. I'm not seeing any better heal ticks when they do pop. So I feel like that was kind of ignored, the heal over times for how much they heal for. They could up that a bit if they're ticking slower. Um, obviously, you still have to use the orb. That needs to, you know, it's ticking every two seconds and it's slow moving. Maybe they can make some adjustment to how much or how fast it moves. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely hurting this patch. It's hurting to be able to apply, like, you know, when, when the teams are moving and even though, even if they make it last longer, like there's, there's situations where we're moving, where people are repositioning. So then I'm in, in a place where I have to like overcast my hots to replace everything where the group has moved to. I mean, I, I really think other than maybe the last boss of VDSR, VKA, um, last boss, maybe even like hard mode or, I'm, and I'm talking about the hard modes too, like hard mode VKA, yeah. hard mode uh, VDSR, hard mode Rock Grove, and then like VDSR last boss, um, Rock Grove hard mode on that first boss, because after 25%, you you have no cleansing pool, so you have to heal through the the um, the poison on those. Right. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm sure Planesbreaker Even... is is doable this patch. Um. With what we have seen, I know that some people may have been progging it. I don't know if it's been done, but I know the VDSR hard mode has been done. The the Swashbuckler Supreme or whatever the heck. Yeah. Um. Xbox did it. So obviously. It's there, um, but the higher level of play, it's definitely a factor. Um, I mean, it would have been nice uh, to see some of those ESO logs for, for that team, but unfortunately, we don't have them for console. Yeah. To see yeah. what they did, because, you know, it is taking a hit. And it's it's not just in, every, in everything. It's just in those particular scenarios where, as a healer, you have to overheal the group a little bit mm -hmm. um bob, yeah like when bob is a tank coming in dam so. incoming damage is happening and you want everybody topped off you want your heels ticking and mm -hmm. i mean yeah i haven't healed um tombs this patch that's a vss um when a player goes into ice tombs but I imagine, like, what you need to do is your hots wouldn't be enough. You would have to have one healer who's healing tombs just for that fight change their CP setup to single target heals. Yes, yes. And then change back out. Like, 
that's the only instance. So it's, it kind of puts a, like a slowdown on the team. Like you've got to wait for the healer to like change their skills, change their CP. Okay. Heal tombs. Okay. That fight's over. Go back to like group healing. Well, I mean, I think the warden is the one that's going to be back to doing the tombs. Now it used to be the Templar. Um, now I think it's the warden coming back to that. Um, Mm -hmm. But yes, I do. I mean, I know for that, I uh, forgot, so I totally forgot that you need to heal tombs. That's another um, healing thing. And heal check, yeah. You probably do need to do some kind of single target heal there um, <clears throat> if you're healing tombs. But to be honest, most of that fight, um, apart from the cage healer, if if you have people that uh, that know what they're doing as far as mechanics and such, which this patch is a little bit better since JP uh, stated that, you know, you have time, you you know, just lay your dots down and, and spam. So you have time to to actually look at the mechanics. You have the the resources there to, to help you avoid some of that AoEs and right. such. Yeah, you need to the, worry about. the goal is to push through and not have to yeah. do as many tombs and... But, um, yeah, groups can still push though. They're still yeah. pushing it because of the health near. Like, yeah, they're easily pushing the flight phases. Because I believe the uh, the atros. Uh, I don't know if the atros are are the atros unbuffed. Are they still the same, or did they actually? I can't remember I if, if they were part of that. We haven't really been in in. in if they have a swing. banner, then they got debuffed. I think they are. I think they die fast. I don't know. So, though. I'm... I'm pretty sure they're considered a uh, an elite um, ad, yeah. Ad. So, so then, they probably melt. They're probably yeah. getting new. <laughs> because I mean, the last patch, the the good groups that were clearing God Slayer that are probably going to still be able to clear God Slayer now, um, they just have to focus more on heals in a way. I think they will be able to get through that phase um, even more. The biggest thing is the the beam phase on that. Mm-hmm. That's... that's true yeah the hard mode beam is a heal check mm-hmm. too and that's a heal that would check be... at least yeah and you and whoever's on the side of the tomb healer who's currently specced into single target heals is gonna hurt well i know the the tanks um they usually help in that situation yeah so we could probably see the i mean i know there's altars all over the place on that um mm-hmm. on that particular thing but like maybe i mean bob what what You've done God Slayer before, um, you know, some progs. What have you seen from the tanks that could potentially help that? Because we probably, as healers, we will need help in those kind of situations. Well, I mean, well, I mean, we used to save barrier for that phase. Mm-hmm. So you, you'd have one barrier go out, and then if you if you needed another one, you know, if the barrier got destroyed, then then you would you would throw it out as well. If you have a DK in there, you can do your igneous. But um, honestly, what uh, what helps the healers the most right now is if you have a couple of people running that AOE vigor, the echoing vigor, mm-hmm. because they do stack. If they come from different people, so you can have multiple oh, echoing yeah, vigor right. healing. It's a can for minor protection too right now, vigor gives. Minor protection? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. So honestly, I think that's I think that's uh, a situation where you you need to just have a couple of people run uh, the echoing and be have it be part of their rotation. Um, and I don't know, I, you know, I don't I don't heal often. Uh, I have healed in the past, but I haven't healed in this patch. Um, so, Jen, if you have one healer cast um, cast like a healing springs, if the okay. other healer, if you're running with two, if the other healer is off tick of you, so like it's a okay. two-second tick, but they do it like halfway through yours and be on different timers, would, that now would, you're that would back be high level organization. <laughs> that is yeah. very high level I organization. But it's is, doable. Is that a thing? Or is there like, is I, it like the game's think, timer tick? I, like, no, I think that would be a thing because it would be a timer be on when you cast that. it. See if, 
two healers tick at different times. So you can you can still get one second ticks, but you would have to be very highly coordinated to do it. Yeah. And again, that goes to I mean, <laughs> if we're pushing, if you're really um, pushing yeah. the hard mode completes and the trifecta yeah. completes, you should be relatively, you know, high yeah. in, in coordination as well. You should be able to yeah, you should be able to coordinate at that level for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It's doable. Um, I really do think it's doable. I mean, I've kind of coordinated something like that before um, in trifectas that I've been in, but <clears throat> that is that is definitely high level healing. Um, is the something that that I would recommend. Maybe like no, I wouldn't. I would recommend it to any other groups unless you are like yeah. legit. You know, pushing. Pushing I'm saying, off yeah. the leaderboards, pushing, I mean, you know, you can skip you and, can and start <laughs> coordinating that to you know try to get to that mindset, mm -hmm. I guess. But um, you know, if you're not in any kind of group, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that, I guess, um, unless you want to as a group. Um, but for trifectas, to be honest, is a piece of advice people really do need to get in the mindset of playing at a higher level because that is that is essentially is what you're doing at the end of the day so lily yeah. always be pushing yourself for like personal no death you know team no death speed yeah. runs cleaning up like better ad pulls <laughs> exactly exactly so <clears throat> but um bob what what has the tanking been been like this patch um that it seen. hasn't been it hasn't been awful um but again it, it depends on you on on how you set up i mean if you're gonna squish yourself completely down and be very reliant on your healer it makes it tougher on yourself um you know so you have to switch some skills out a little bit maybe switch a set out here or there a monster set or something to help yourself out um <laughs> Most of my tank setups are are relatively self sufficient, um, skill wise. So you know it's it hasn't been much of a change to me. Um, but if you're if you're trying to go in and do something, you know, as like a thirty six thirty seven k tank health tank, uh, and you're relying on your healer, <laughs> you know, to get you through um, some of the content, uh, you may struggle a little bit. You, you may have to bump your health up a little bit. You may have to bump your uh, self-sustain up, your resources up, uh, and, and figure it out. Uh, the the biggest thing is is having something on your bar to kind of uh, help the healer out with the heals. Because like Dan was saying, you know, the ticks are two seconds instead of one second. So, um, you know, if you're getting... You know, if you're getting a 2K tick every two seconds instead of a 2K tick every one second, you need to help out a little bit. Um, but, like, content-wise, <clears throat> it really hasn't been much different. You know, honestly, I haven't, I haven't seen much difference in, in tanking. No, I think um, from we <clears throat> the, the guild uh, team right now, the chill team, what we're currently doing is we're just farming because uh, we will be doing TikTok pretty soon. But uh, we're just farming BDSR, and <clears throat> you can see the, you can see the the heal stuff, um, as far as you know the last boss of BDSR. But um, and the tanking, you know, the main tank has to be a little bit more beefy, I guess, <clears throat> than that last boss. <laughs> um, but I mean, the DPS is there. The DPS, I think, have that, you know, that knee-jerk reaction that JP was talking about. There shouldn't be that um, once you play the game. I mean, it's a little bit easier, so the rotation's not what it used to be as far as, like, the complexity. But at this point, nobody can tell me that without practice and hard work, you can't get over 100k on that dummy. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I really do believe anybody that can practice, you know, with the right setup, right gear, they can hit a hundred K on that dummy and be better in content. 
<clears throat> oh yeah, and be better, and and that that will translate more yeah. into content because the floor is higher. It definitely is in content, mm-hmm. especially. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Like for people that like to push really high numbers on a dummy, and I'm sure they're frustrated. But what I would say is, come on, guys, we all know that you know parsing 130k on a dummy doesn't get you skins and clears and titles so no. i mean nope. is it is it more important to like have that damage translate in content absolutely and it's definitely yeah. like in your mid tier groups mid to high tier groups i don't think it's an issue i will say though pugging a lot of dungeons and stuff like this weekend the last couple of weeks it's pretty difficult sometimes it can be with the low the, the low end but Again, I think we talked about this before, how like these nerfs punish people who are dedicated to the game, right? Mm-hmm. And the people that don't want to get there are never going to get there. So that's why I'm still seeing like low level. You can tell like they maybe the education just isn't there for them and they don't understand, but it is kind of more difficult like in pugs, for me at least, where, you know, it doesn't matter what the other DPS is doing, doesn't matter if the healer isn't as strong or the tanking isn't. Now with the healing nerfs, it's like... And if you can't push stuff kind of quick, like it puts a lot of pressure, like in your pug groups, at least, I think that's what I've seen a little bit. No, I mean, I, I probably agree with you on that. I mean, <clears throat> pugging yeah. is hardcore life, but I mean, it's it's somewhere that you can something you can do to make yourself be better at the game because uh, you some benchmarks. Yeah, yeah, you're you're essentially picking up the slack for the rest of the group uh, if you have a bad group. And then, you know, you might get lucky one day and say. You know, pug with somebody that has a legit God Slayer title, and, and then it's just easy. So you get rewarded every once in a while, but <clears throat> most of the time, ninety percent of the you're time, you're gonna have several bad ones and like one. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's been a little I less recently, uh, consistent, so it's been a little mm-hmm. difficult. Well, a lot of people got freaked out and left, uh, or took a break from the game. I know Pluto took a break from the game. Yeah. So I mean, and a lot of the people who are like we're at end game content and like pushing for harder things and skins and titles those are the people taking a break and there's still like a lot of player base that are the up and comers and they're not necessarily as organized or knowledgeable on how to complete things um recently i pugged a um and craig lauren and aa and just to see what it was like and it was it was rough like group disorganization really shows if this patch too where like you can't just get through with like crazy high burn it's you need you need the organization also i mean <clears throat> you know the speaking of organizing um we can talk about some of the stuff that actually has worked for us or that could work for a group um just you know the sorks are really hitting really well this patch uh, Nightblades are really hitting well. Like stamina, Nightblades are hitting really well in content. <clears throat> Mag does too. Mag um, hits well too. But I think Sam, you, we were talking about last night that Sam is a little bit better. So why not just be the better, you know, take the better option there? Uh, DKs are absolutely back, one hundred percent. Stam yeah, DKs. No one mentioned <laughs> it. No one. No one talks about. It. They're back. They're definitely back. Oh. All their timers are like twenty to thirty seconds. I like all their dots. I mean, it's literally you, you, you set it and forget it. It's like a, it's like a, a damn crock. <laughs> yeah, the the seething stack, like fifteen yeah. seconds now to consume that is really nice. Yeah. Um, Talon's rotation, even on a stam DK, is nasty as hell because like you're stacking your, you're getting your empowered whips because uh you're casting your talons or whatever with the four second timer um it's definitely like doable people need to like i don't know i feel like the community as a whole kind of was so upset about this patch we really didn't look at like the positive things and yeah that change to the whip is really nice and personally i i, I want to see like the dk meta again i want to see like five dks and you know maybe a blade and a stam comp well, I mean... honestly one of them and 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 one buff crow and one sork. Like, Last night we uh, had what three DKs in the group and we were just melting stuff. Like, it was mm-hmm. it was. They bad. don't parse as high, but in content in again, content, dummy dead. dummy parses aren't anything. Like it doesn't always translate, but in actual like content with like, you know, an example swashbucklers jumping around and all that stuff. Guess what? All my fifty million DK dots are on it. Oh, and my flames of oblivion is smacking the heck out of it too. 
So, like, those are little things that, like, a dummy won't show you, but you actually see it in content, whereas, like, every other class, it's, like, I mean, Flames of Oblivion is such a strong ability, and it has been for a long time, but, like, think about that, like, 90% of my kit is on the ads when they're all moving around, or if we're moving around, like, 90% of it is applied, like, in content, so I, I'd be curious to look at the logs. Um, I don't know if they've been posted yet, Cougar, but I'm going to be watching them like the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks. And I would expect in a lot of these longer trials, not the mini trials, we're going to see DK's like top, top damage numbers guaranteed. I I'd be shocked so. if it wasn't. I hope so, because even though the blades hit harder, like single target, even even the stamp sorks, I think hit a little bit harder. But still, um, DK is just you get the extra tankiness as well. They're just beefy. They don't have it. They just don't have as many dots running as a DK does. I mean, you nope. you are you are always having damage running as a DK as long as you keep your dots going. <clears throat> yeah, this is nope. the this is a DK meta right here. Um, when you think about it, you know, just the way they're set up this patch. I well, I don't think that. people. I mean, everyone everyone wants to dust their blades off because mm -hmm. like. You know, your hardcore blade players that love them, and I get the appeal. It's such a challenging, rewarding, like, rotation. Um, I think everyone's really excited about the blade changes and things like that. I mean, yeah, they are better, but I don't know. I think in content, man, just give me five DKs and let's go. Like, I mean, it's like know, the Templar thing. A Sorka Crow and a Blade, like, just there for the buffs and a Stam Comp, you know, a, the buff Crow, the Sork. And then, you know, I like the atro, the changes to the atro, and then give me like one blade for the weapon crit, and away you go, honestly. It's like the Templar mm -hmm. Tark, it's that nostalgia, you know? Mm hmm. It's, they're like, oh, they're back. We can play a little bit. Um, no, they're really strong. Yeah. Like, I'm not knocking the class at all. I just. Okay. Cleave is king, man. And all the, look at every new trial. Look at. Look at VDSR and look at Rock Grove. It's all about, and like, if you're trying, especially if you're trying to push, like, trifectas, it's a, and even VKA, it's a different direction that, you know, Zoss mm -hmm. is taken with trials and trash is, like, a, a large portion of your time in the trial. And I know Bob's, like, mentioned that before. So, like, your cleave, AOE cleave classes, man, where you get it done. I mean, I know Bolt has been experimenting with um, a lot of, sets with his dps um well you were talking about some of that stuff last night um maybe you know like our audience would like to know a little bit more on that yeah for sure because of the new patch a lot of things like damage is really low and stuff but oh by the way hello everyone <laughs> sorry i'm late um but yeah i've been testing a lot of things out like i test tested out um been testing out sororia and sovkins sororia is pretty nice like the how they buff that, how the stacks build up a lot quicker. It is very noticeable like that. And, well, and the weapon and spell damage too is higher. 63 oh, yeah. 68 now per stack. Yeah, so. and, and the Soraya itself, like as a set, it all gives you weapon and spell damage every line. So it's really it's really neat. And well the perfect one gives you magic up, but yeah, but it's good you can run that on Stam or Mag. I've been testing it on Mag Blade and then Coral Riptide on my Stam Blade and stuff, but over both perform pretty well. It's just where you have to be standing still. But a lot of the new fights and stuff you do, and you build up stacks really quick. It's quite nice, and it's like that quick you can one buy it as well. Like it wasn't as reliable beforehand. But yeah, I've been testing stuff like that and rally. It depends on what content and stuff you're doing too, right? But I've been testing a lot, going back and forth, and then after talking, definitely Stam Nightblade definitely comes out on top. For sure, especially with some of the testing I did last night as well. I did a um, there's a VDSR hard mode last night, and my my damage was noticeably different. I'm changing him just to stam to do that, and that's where, to be honest, you need a lot of cleave damage. But yeah, just get cow chops and stuff. But then even if these days, even if you're a stam, you can still have a staff on your back bar too, if you wanted a bit more splash damage with blockade. Um, even ha using um, proxy debt and PVE is actually pretty strong as well. And you have a lot of ads. Even that's been pretty handy as well to have up. But yeah, I've, with my testing and stuff well, that I personally have been doing, like I've been testing out Solzan, Silverblight, on other characters and stuff, that's still a really nice setup. But that's more of a four man, unless you get constant stacks of killing ads every 30 seconds. That's a little fun little mini game you can play as well. 
But there's a lot of sets that, in this patch, as long as you know what you're kind of doing, you can kind of run anything, depending on what content, and with your raid leads and stuff. But yeah, yeah. one one Azura Blade and the new trials is is pretty optimal actually. Like one person running it, you're fine mm. because there's so there's ads almost in like every fight, so it's not a completely dead set, you know, and it you helps you so much, much on trash. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. well you want that on like a uh, a DK or even at mm-hmm. a pro. But a DK so, is just so many dots that's going to proc like every <laughs> a lot. Alkash, Alkash Zen's DK, Azura Blade DK, and then like three full parse DK, three full damage DKs. Okay, mm-hmm. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah, that's like standard is so like, strong too. Don't underrate standard. Oh, it's yeah. probably it's the best ultimate. I mean, meteor is really strong single target. I get it, but like really, if you think about best back bar, like alt best ultimate. Like oh, I, standard, I stand, standard, standard yeah. get, having access to the class ultimate while still being able to use two H is just very strong as well. I mean, you know yeah. how powerful like five standards are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, standard. it's great, the strongest, one of the strongest ultimates in the game since it, since beta. I mean, it's, yeah, it's stupid how strong it is. So it's a super viable <laughs> option for the two H back bar, anyways, to give you that, you know super strong ultimate that's another thing that i think makes them um better in content as well it's just having access to standard and like being able to run standard with 2h on the back bar and just have a extremely good cleave like ultimate and 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 your single target target technically because it buffs you when you're in it anyway so now your uh your 15 whips are real strong single target as well when you're trying yeah, to focus priority all your, adds buffs all your damage it's yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think that's yeah. that's the key to success. Five standards, let's go. <laughs> Five standards. I mean, uh-huh. they did. I'm telling you, those those atros last night, they uh, they burned pretty fast. We pushed. They have good ulti regen <laughs> did, too, right? Yeah. DK has a yes. built-in ulti regen, yep. so that stacks mm-hmm. with the pillagers in your group. It's it's mm-hmm. super good. It's super good. So the DK meta is back. Absolutely. Um, stand blades are good. Storks are really good this patch too. Um, I would say like as far as the crows, um, maybe just keep the EC crow as the one crow in the group, and then because there's there's just better classes. To... Yeah, well, yeah, it depends. Obviously, like that's that's the thing about comping a group. If I have mm-hmm. someone that's really good on a necro, it's probably maybe a one or two percent difference, right, between mm-hmm. the DK and the crow. But if they're really bad on a DK, then it could be. A detrimental just to put them on a DK, you know, that's where kind of knowing your yeah. your group like really matters. Crows are fine too. If someone's like really like comfortable or com- more competent on a crow, it's not going to make that big of a difference. I mean, yeah. I'm but for if, most groups at least. If, um, I mean, let's just say that if you have the perfect team that can play in any, anything, anything, yeah. um, you know, the the meta is definitely heavy DK, um, one night blade for the for the buff. Well, even the Nightblade executes. When I was running, I was running to Subkins and Sororia the other night, and my I was hitting impales like, and there was the mag one, so it was long range. It was like varying between 110 to 140. The only time I've seen that like single target is the Vatistran freaking do wield, it, like at low. That was pretty crazy. Even with the Stam one, I've been testing that. I haven't seen as high numbers. But I haven't ran like the same content or same situation, right? So it's always situational with that. But that has been pretty damn nice to just single target something down that needs to die real quick. Well, and Nightblade's always been strong like that. The good part is that, you know, our team will have uh, the testing time this mm-hmm. patch for that. I mean, it's, it's in a way, it's a little bit of a fresh air because we get to test a lot of the stuff going forward. And as far as Sauce, like, yeah, we were a little pissed off with them. But, um, I mean, right now, really, the the only thing they need to even do in the game, um, as far as, like, you know, fixing some bugs and such, is just fix a little bit of the healing. And just it's just buff radiating. It, yeah, it's just, just put radiating back. Yeah. Just radiating, and it's fine. And I think what they really need to fix, which is a big dynamic that you see in a lot of trials, is the tanking. Like the blocking, the block drop that the game always does, mm-hmm. how, you know, fire sometimes doesn't work, then now you have to use frost clench because 
you know, instead of adding some stuff, they should go back and have a bit of a look at that because that's very detrimental to a group. You could be doing everything right, even as a tank, but then the game screws you like that, you know. Mm -hmm. so obviously, it's not. there can be a little bit of player um, mistakes in there as well sometimes because the, you know, the range on it, it does take a little bit to get used to. It's not as easy just to put Frost Clench on and set it in a fire, and then there you go. No, you lose, like, four meters, and you don't think of it being that much, but that is a lot, that four meters. I know from my tanking experience that it's yeah. actually quite a big distance. I mean, I like to think we do have some decent tanks in our groups. Mm -hmm. So I do I do see what you're saying. And I mean, they, they do need to revisit that. But yeah, like JP saying, just buff radiating. I think once you buff radiating and it goes back to the way it was, even the springs, like you could still use springs. Um, and it'll just be fine in a way because both healers doing re you know if you double re uh regen or degen or whatever um then you should be fine and we should be able to to have those fights that need the optimal healing should be well what i've seen too away. is a lot of dps as well like for their heal they'll use the aoe vigor the one mm -hmm. that heals everyone because that stacks as well yeah so you have instead of someone putting like a selfish uh vigor on or you know something like i don't know like like on my nightblade i've been using health offering because that gives a major mending as well to the mm -hmm. group that it, that it hits and that just helps healing up a, a lot and it's pretty good like little burst heal but if i was something else i'd put that on just to help the healers like the it's, it's crazy, crazy that in a patch sorry it's okay <laughs> that uh um... That uh, the t DPS have to help the healers in a way with a, a lot of AOE healing and make their job a little bit easier because they have been big nerf. But I'll let Jen add on to this. Yeah, what you were going in there with, and we kind of discussed it before too, was um, how DPS are needing to run some self heals and like add into helping the healers. That's what I would like to see fixed. I don't want to see, you know, DPS being their own, like, self-sufficient damage dealers and and healers and kind of, like, further negating the reason for even having a healer. I want, you know, healers to be viable teammates in the group, and I want them to be able to, you know, obviously perform and do their job. Like, DPS shouldn't have to be running their own heals, and, you know, those off cases where they get separated and they have to do, like, their own, like, mechanic away from the group. Yeah, those people would need to, but... I would really like to see healing fixed where group help healing from the team isn't needed. They can focus on doing their job, but we can focus on doing ours. I I agree with that. Um, I mean, I think, like I said, just buff radiating. Um, yeah, we we discussed it yeah. at length well, before you got in here. It's, I mean, that that's it really. Like that's that's all in my opinion that sauce should do uh with the game i think the game is you know once people kind of see the the state of the game and they play it um i think it's pretty healthy in my opinion um yeah except for all the people that rage quit this patch <laughs> like the yeah like you can tell numbers are down like yeah mm -hmm. it, it really is but it's unfortunate. You know what yeah. it is? It's because they uh, nerf freaking Nightblade. I mean, not Nightblade. freaking Wardens to the ground. Bring Warden back. Bring him back. Yeah, Warden. Warden, needs Warden. Some love. Yeah. Well, the then he changes. The group is nice, but, you know, yeah, it's it's rough. Well, the, the way that they were... I mean, all in all, they just need to separate PvE and PvP at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Because a lot of these changes that happen to PvE and PvP... Um, sometimes are because of the PvE or PvP environment. Um, I know Wardens were really strong in PvP, so that's probably why they got nerfed to the ground. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I don't PvP as much, but... Silly. You from... literally have Battle Spirit. Wow. Yeah. Increase the amount, the reduced healing with Battle Spirit that it is, like, yeah. simple. Uh, yeah, but there's... With... Yeah. They're still really strong at low health, healing back up to full. That that's the warden's strength, though. In BVP, so when they're low health, they have a really uh, on tap kind of burst heal that they can do. That's what makes them hard to kill. I mean, and it's fine, but that's 
that's where the whole like you know nerf him in different you know have to where battle spirit does this this and this to a class or or just have it to where it's two different things you know the the skill this skill does has this tooltip in pvp and has this tooltip in pv you know pve you know pvp okay. with battle spirit this is the tooltip and you know pve without battle spirit this is the tooltip and this is what the, well, the skill does a lot of my pvp friends probably aren't gonna like this but until like pvp rewards mean something in my mind it will always be casual I don't care how, what kind of ball group you are, what you think you are. I bet you if you watched, like, if you looked at YouTube, like, views and algorithms and things like that, what sells ESO is PvE. PvP oh, doesn't sell the game. It was built as a PvP game, but that does not keep sell the game anymore. People want to do PvE content for housing items, skin, like, all kinds of things. So catering to a casual format is just silly and again that would change my opinion would change if there was like greater rewards for pv for whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, sorry i got yeah. yeah i guess like that would change i i know i got cut off there you, i guess that would that would change though like if they actually gave like better rewards in pvp then you know but to me it's not and so therefore like unbalancing your game for a casual like format or casual style of gameplay i don't care what anyone says it is um because and that's my point it is casual because the rewards aren't worthy enough to be serious about right and it doesn't work well enough to be serious about consistently so why would you so therefore it's casual mm. <laughs> bob's having some technical mm. difficulties over there with his uh with his mic mm. that's gonna be interesting um mm. sorry about that folks but um I mean, going back to the reward system in PvP, we've talked about this before. No, um, I know. You know. So why ruin the serious part of the game? Yeah. For that, it's silly. I mean. I mean, I'd be curious. I wish I could see that statistic. Sauce? Some of the biggest content content creators in this game, the most views on YouTube, it's all PVE oriented, all of it. So, I mean, look no, at you're skinny chicks. On that. It's like it's a, it's a casual activity that like there is no winning PvP. Yeah. There's no finishing nope. PvP. They're all the keep taking will always be a back and forth fight. It doesn't matter how many people you kill. Like yeah, you've earned still... your five star. There's things to earn. Um, but yeah, like when you finish a trial, you've you've finished it. You've achieved it. You've earned your title. You've earned your skin. You've won. Right? It's P- PvP is what you do to like. All right, I don't, I don't have any trials or like anything going on this weekend. I'm gonna go in PvP and earn some crystals and have some fun, and it's gonna be a back and forth fight. It's just an activity you do yeah. like parts, you know. Well, that's my point though. So yeah. why, why like cater to the casual whatever format and ruin like the base of your game? It what does, sells yeah. your game? That's silly. It's such like a poor like business model or plan. Like they need to figure it out. Like right away, either give really good PvP rewards and make it a more serious format, then fine. Then it's legit. It's worth like adjusting. If not, then you know what? Stop messing with it and separate the two. It's, yeah, that's, that's what needs to happen. It's, they don't understand that though. It's it's unfortunate, but I mean, I I do agree. Um, I would go in there if there's better rewards it's other than mm-hmm. yep. you know. Yep. Um, yep. But as far as the state of the game, as far as anything, it's it's been really just, good. Yeah, so, the gameplay is good. Come just back, guys. Only, the population, yeah, everyone needs to come back and try it out. You know, who? I mean, we'd get bored of the game if we all knew the answer to the problem. Like finding a solution is always fun. Yeah, I think that's why I we mean, all this, play, anyways. This is the solution, guys. Like embrace the meta, because I mean, this the hybrid builds are there we did it last patch um mm, it's two this, patches. yeah really for two patches so we did it for two patches it's there get back in the game you know it's actually pretty healthy uh, when you think about it as far as everything but the heels the heels and it's not even that much it's not even that much 
it's very light tinkering that needs to happen with the heels. And then we're, you know, going to get there. And, I mean, update 36, they, they really haven't done much more with the game. There's not really that much being changed uh, as far as the PTS. I know they <clears throat> they showed us a couple of new sets. Um, and, I mean, the, the back alley gourmand is probably the the one that I've seen the most, but even there, like, it's it's the SPC, basically, but, and the Yolnokren, kind of together, it adds crit chance for the 2 and 3, and then the 129 weapon and spell damage, and while you have a food buff active, your critical damage and critical healing is increased by 13%. Um, I mean, that's good, but the Overland sets are okay. Phoenix Moth, uh, a lot of people are like Minor Courage, Minor Force for 10 seconds. That's the SPC in Yulmaker, my bad. But it's the Stamina Healer. There you go, JP. You have your, your Stamina Healer. Man, I'm losing you too, Cougar. Hmm? I'm losing you too. I can barely hear you. Um, The the Stamina Healer um, for for that uh, is is interesting i mean it's we'll see we're gonna get another class soon i think and that's gonna bring everyone back to the game <laughs> <laughs> we'll be so. excited i hope so it'll all make sense it'll all make sense we're only seeing like 10 or 15 maybe 20 percent of the overall goal within the next year i'm sure it's like pretty much a pattern of Zoss. they mm -hmm. always make room for something and we always see the room being made first before they launch it just like when Kilt was launched and they lowered the crit rating, what max crit rating was on gear because they knew they were going to put Kilt into the game. Trust me, there's something coming. I can I can almost guarantee it. The yeah. question is, is you know, will people still be interested and active in the game? And I hope so. I, mean, I hope so too. I hope so too. I mean, these these six sets. The there's three overlands and three craftable sets. They're good starting sets, in my opinion. Um. You know, the Back Alley Gourmand, the Phoenix Moth, uh, those are the Overland sets. Yeah, the They're... one with the food that gives you the crit damage yeah. when you have a buff, that, that's a really strong set. Yeah, it's not as good as others, though, um, but it is it is a pretty strong set to start off with, and you can get it, because this is an Overland set. Um, and then the Phoenix Moth, if you don't have SPC or you own the crit, like, that's not a bad set to have. Um, however... I think Yolnokren just outperforms it. Um, and well, we'll see. They're gonna know. get adjusted too. Yeah, they I mean, they the might. Numbers. They might. Um, as far as the craftable sets, the Claw of the Forest Wraith, the one that uh, has crit chance, weapon and spell damage, crit chance, and then adds twenty thirty seven crit chance to your class abilities. That might actually be pretty hot on a DK, because you know. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's a pretty good set for that. And then you have the Old Growth Brewer and the Chimera's Rebuke. Uh, Chimera's Rebuke, um, maybe that's some something good for heavy attack set or heavy attack meta. Because you, um, <laughs> I mean, I guess you can have a tank wear this. I don't know. Um, you gaining resources from fully charged heavy attack, also resource. 2363 of the gain resource to the three allies nearest your target so if you're casual pve um or like even in pvp maybe um casual four-man pvp then i i don't know i guess um the the mythics are a little bit better but not as much i guess um, the Fawn's Lark, uh, you have the sprint for one second, you gain, you know, you're passing through enemies. So if you like to dungeon hop by yourself, um, that's, you know, race to the end, I guess. I don't know. JP, you want a Fungo Grotto race to the end with Fawn's Lark? No, I hate that. <laughs> that's... I'm a DPS. I like to kill shit. That's what I do. That is, I deal I mean... damage. <laughs> I, I think that shit. mythic basically gives uh, anybody in PvP, whatever class you are, 
the Sork bolt. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. The bolt passive, where you stun people, basically. Yeah, I mean, that's true, because you are stunning them for four seconds, and the, and the bolt, like, the whatever escape thing that is, uh, it is a four second, I believe. So... I mean, JP's well, you can like, use nope. that one and the other morph that absorbs projectiles on your stam sork and run through people and stun them and get to absorb mm -hmm. all the projectiles behind them at the same time. It sounds. Uh, yeah. I mean, sounds I, like fun. You could do it in PvP too, um, but mm -hmm. I think I mean I could see it in PvP in a way ish, um, and then the. The other one that I could see in PvP is the the bracing one, the Cerebane's Ward. The allies within the zone increase increase their block mitigation by thirty percent and their health recovery by nine fifty. But you can't move. You cannot move while brazing. So, um, I could see that in PvP. You have tanks in PvP as well. So, you can have one tank wear this and the other tank kind of be at the top. And, you know, whoever's wearing that mythic could be kind of in the center and give everybody, like, a protection bubble. With that with that necro pull-in ability and just stand there and yeah, pull everyone in. Exactly. <laughs> I'll block and pull everyone in. So, that, that, would, be, that would be good. Um, the other mythic we're having is the 300 magicka recovery, but your magicka pool becomes... The sprint, roll, dodge, bash, break, free, sneak, and block <laughs> consumable instead of your stamina. Um, I mean, if you're heavy stamina and you don't use a lot of magicka, maybe, but I don't know. I just, it's I don't kinda like silly. It's I don't like that. I don't we have like a hybrid meta. It, we have a hybrid meta and then you'd have to stack into one or the other to yeah. do it. So it's kind of like, why? Yeah. Why? I, well, it's it's just what stamina has been doing since the base since the game started. Stamina users have always used their stamina pool for block dodge roll, you know, and your skill, right? Yeah. So now it's just making it that magic people can do it that too if they want to. Is it game breaking? No. It's just it's <laughs> it's you silly. Know, if you want to use it to play that way, you can. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's silly and it's stinky. Silly. <laughs> stinky. <laughs> it's stinky. Um, I mean, I guess if you if you want to play it that way, I mean, the sauce is giving you a way to play it that way, basically. So yeah. there you go. You can play it. You yeah. can play it like that. But as far as like the two thumbs up, no, you're not gonna get it here because I I think the best two mythics out of that is the. The one where you can pass through enemies and the bracing one. Um, will they both see PvP? I don't know. Um, I think the brazing one will see PvP more. Just because people want to try it. The Fawn's Larkin one will see, um, I guess, some PvE. And it might see some PvP. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, and as far as the sets go that have been out so far like i said there's some sets that you can put on yourself to start out but <clears throat> there's sets out there that will do the job a lot better than these six sets um have you know i uh, i was hoping for the old growth brewer set to be better than the um what is that the alchemist set that came out of Hughes bane um, the after drinking a potion, you gain 245 magicka stamina and health recovery for 45 seconds. But I mean, it's all it does is like stamina, magicka, and health recovery. Like I wish it was like stamina, mag, and health instead of like the recovery. And then after drinking a potion, you gain the stamina, health recovery, and I wish it was like that um, instead of what it is. But as far as everything else goes uh it's still too early on pts we're gonna keep an eye on pts and um the next podcast will always will obviously talk about um what they're probably gonna come out with pts you know what is gonna come to to live 
but uh, other than that, I mean, uh, we have a couple of guild updates. The Halloween co uh, contest, the housing contest is going to come in October. You guys will see some of that um, video to kind of highlight what you need to do and what the requirements are um, mid-October. And then the Tales of Tribute tournament, we are having one tonight. <laughs> Um, so we won't announce the winners here because, you know, we can't, uh, JP is gonna commentate with me tonight. That's gonna be fun, JP. <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna know, dude, by the time this thing goes live, it'll yeah. already be over. <laughs> yeah, but oh. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be fun. Um, Bolt is gonna try to take it down, hopefully tonight. <laughs> Bolt um, has been trying to take it down the last two months, and mm -hmm. he has not succeeded. So bad. No, every time I get to the final best out of three, it comes down to the final third match every time. This but, month, yeah. bro. This month, this is the this is the tournament right here. JP's waiting till the end. He's gonna go in November and try to get one of the last spots. It's eh, maybe it, he's playing it close. And if not, that is, you know, he will be commentating with me on the December tournament, the big tournament. Hopefully, um, we'll have some of that fun times. And Bob hasn't played in a tournament because I don't think he likes Tales of Tribute very much. I, I haven't I haven't taken the time to learn it. Like, I know a lot <laughs> of people love it, and they really enjoy it, and... I just haven't taken the time to learn it. If I learn it, I have a feeling that's going to be a huge time sink for me. <laughs> so Bob's like, "Yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let the devil take that from me." Just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's. A... I used to play online poker like all the time, and I could just see myself like getting into the card game and the the strategy, and um, eh, I got other things I gotta, I gotta. Do. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a fun game man it's a fun game it really is um we're getting close to the december tournament though it's the the brackets are coming down to 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 a close and it's gonna be fun we have Pluto, and what's the prize pool what's the prize pool five the, mil five mil five gold. million total paying out to what the top two or three um well five mil is gonna be paying to the top two and then the rest is going to be like patterns, um, some housing stuff, some tail stuff. Like it's just going to be random assortment mats. There's going to be some gold associated with it. Crates. You need that money. Crates. The most money I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, bold. That's why you got to take it down, you know. And then, mm -hmm. you know, take it down again in, in December. I just want to point out that he will spend it the day he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure he's gonna spend it or you're gonna spend it for him you know no no she has money I don't I spend it as soon as I get it in this game if I, if I can buy something that increases my DPS by like 500 I'll do it <laughs> you know hey I mean that's dedication to your character in, in my mm -hmm. opinion well into so the teams it. you know like yeah. Yeah, I want to be at peak performance as much as I can even if I work a 12, 13 hour day, I'm still going to come by and try. Well, I'm I mean, sick as a dog can hardly see. <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. Bolt was sick a couple of weeks ago. He was wrapped up in a blanket and still doing trials, guys. Like, that is dedication right there. Sick as a dog. Mm -hmm. um, I was sick the last couple of days, too, doing trials. And Thursday, I thought I was going to die. Um, well, to be honest, it was that was before we got. Uh, our griffin right yeah our purple skin. yeah so because i was like we're so close like and i know the day that i feel like shit is gonna be the day we like kind of get it you know when you, exactly. And, exactly and it was like the next i think it was a wednesday or a thursday we got it on the yeah. tuesday or wednesday so yeah. you know so i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna let the team down and be like oh like an hour beforehand i get home i'm like oh shit i can do it i can do it <laughs> <laughs> but other than that i mean you know, the Halloween tournament um, is going to be for Tails next next um, 
October, well, this coming October. And then we're going to have the Tails tournament and the housing contest. Um, I know Jen wants to have a Halloween costume contest, but maybe that's something we can do next year. <laughs> I know she'll like that. Um, that would be cool, I guess, but we'll, we'll kind of see as far as everything goes, you know, thank you guys for, for listening. Um, I always thank these guys for coming over here. Uh, they're taking their time to, to get you guys some information and, and get everything situated for you. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting, but, uh, both thank you again for joining us today and we might just make bolt part of the regular crew over here all right thank you for ha having me but uh thank you guys for watching and have a good day <laughs>